All right, all right. Okay, let me get a little. Let me get a little. Sip, sip, sip. Mm-hmm. Okay, do I look okay? Do I have anything in my teeth? Anything in my teeth? Nothing? Good? All right. Oof. I wish I put a little more ice in there. Mm-hmm. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Good evening. I'm Rebecca Henderson, aka the Tan Tigress, and I'm here to present to you Off Color, powered by Versa Colorado. Oh, sorry. Okay. (laughs) All right. So to answer all of your questions up front about who I am and why I'm called the Tan Tigress, it's because I'm half black and half white and I'm all opinions strong ones, so you better look out, okay? And I'm called the Tan Tigress because I like to think of myself as like a Black Panther, but my brother-in-law informed me that I'm more like a Tan Tigress. So I'm rolling with that, and you all can roll with it it too. Off Color was born out of the 2016 presidential election, which made me feel like racism was sanctioned by the President of the United States. That kind of changed things that I was doing. I mean, I'm a wife and a mother and a librarian and a writer. And then after that, I became a filmmaker. I've gotten really involved in my community. I don't consider myself an activist. I'm just active in my community. Uh, So now on Off Color, we like to talk about sometimes things that are a little bit uncomfortable around race and identity. And I like to bring people in who are doing the work in their communities no matter like what that looks like and in this case what it looks like is a beautiful artist a singer a community healer and her name is Danette Hollowell welcome Danette Hollowell come on in girl bless me bless me with those pipes pretty brown babies kissing those ladies driving them crazy what do they know Ooh, that's the new Juneteenth that's song. That's the new Juneteenth song. Okay, so tonight is a singer and a songwriter, and she's my friend, fam. <laughs> she's like my sister from another mister, and I like to say that because I feel such a warm, strong connection with you, and I'm so blessed to have you here this evening. So thank you for coming to chat with me. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Okay, so before we like get into all the things that we're going to talk about tonight, I... So Danette and I work with each other outside of this environment. Danette helps me with my family. I help her with her family. We're together. It's a really nice situation. Um, Something that I just had learned about you, I wanted to ask you, though. I learned this recently. uh, It was about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That you are, in fact, not a Denver native. You are a military brat, as the kids say. Do you say that? Is that the term? Do people still say that? That's the term I grew up on. I don't know if they're saying something new, but yeah, I'm a military brat. (laughs) My father was in the Navy for 22 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so what are some of the places that you lived? Um, Well, I was born in San Diego, um, and after San Diego, we lived in Oakland for a little bit. And after Oaktown, we lived in Oahu in Hawaii. Mm. Um, We lived in... Japan, Okinawa, Japan, for a little bit. Hontone. Um, arigato, arigato san. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's the, that was mostly traveling through um, his military work. But after all of that, I also lived in Louisiana for a little bit. So wow. So Colorado been, was kind you, of my last stop. Okay. And so now, and are you happy here? Yeah. I mean, the rent sucks. Well, the rent's too damn high. <laughs> the rent is too high. Um, when the rent was low, it was a beautiful place full of music and art and culture and healthy living and lifestyle. And it still is all of those things. It's just much more expensive. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hear you and I feel you on that. Um, so you've been on my show before on the Off Color podcast. Yes. What's different about this one? This one's fancy. I feel all like high rise living, you know, your little... Your setup, there's a lot. It's because we, we are powered by Versa Colorado. Okay, Versa Colorado. So I don't know too much about Versa Colorado. I mean, this is like my first experience. It's a good one, but yeah. like. Yeah, well, they're a local, they're trying to kind of re- not replace, but fill the void that when local news organizations have kind of essentially left the building, um, they're trying to 
give platforms to people who typically would not have a platform. Mm. Somebody like me, somebody like you. They also want to cover local things that are happening in Colorado and just and not just Denver. This is this is going to feel a little Denver based because that's where I live and I'm not from here. <laughs> but we really want to hear from people from all over Colorado. Nice. So that's kind of I think I don't know if that's a good wrap up. Is that a good wrap up producers? Is that a good description of Versa and what you're nice. doing? Nice. I like it personally because I feel like you'll see stuff here that you wouldn't necessarily see other places. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really cool. So I'm really excited that we're where that off color is powered by Versa. All right. All right. But I did have one question to ask you about growing up in military because I always oh. I felt like when I met you, mm -hmm. I felt a good connection with you. And I think as a mixed race person, being half black, half white, like I sometimes I feel a little bit like out of place or I'm looking for my community, looking for my space. And you were incredibly welcoming to me when we met. You were super mm. nice. Like just you were just really kind <laughs> and a lovely person. And I wanted to know if growing up in the military, if that influenced how you interact with people. Yeah, so I have like childhood friends that are like lit, that we believe we grew up together, even though I didn't spend all of my time in those places um, in, you know, a couple different countries, a couple different states, um, and just moving to new places. And I love meeting new people, and it probably has something to do with the way that I grew up, but moving to new places, you got to get those people skills um, sharpened for sure, and you, you adapt to the culture and um, Denver culture was very different than California culture. Mm. California culture was very different than Hawaiian culture, mm. different than Japanese culture. But I would say I, I definitely have friends in all of those places um, from when we were kids. And it's just, yeah, I, I enjoy it. And I think that um, it's definitely helped me with my people skills yeah. <laughs> in life to just make people feel comfortable and welcome wherever they're coming from. Well, I want to stop and thank you, baby, for doing that for me as I try to like navigate Denver and the social scene. So I really enjoy that. So I want to give it up for Danette Hollow. <laughs> All right. Whew. So we do have kind of some 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 stuff to get into tonight. So right. We are going to be covering. I have a lot of topics, girl. We're going to get into it. I talked a little bit about the history of off color, which was brought to us by Dr. Gregory Diggs. Google that later. OK, we have a few things that we are going to talk about. Number one, we're going to talk about we might spend the whole time talking about this. We're going to uh. talk about <laughs> um, C.O.N. Spiracy theories. Okay. Okay. Right. So a lot of stuff has been going on um, right now in the country and a few things. So first I wanted to, I'm going to go national and then I'm going to go a little bit local if that's okay. Is that okay? So the first thing I wanted to talk about, it's not a conspiracy theory necessarily, but there have been three churches in a Louisiana parish that were, were burned. I don't know if people have heard about that. Did you know about these churches? Because you said yes. you lived in Louisiana. I lived in Louisiana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, from what I gather, they were in uh, or near a place called Opelousas. Shout out to Opelousas. I had a lot of friends from Opelousas. Yeah. Um, they have a very distinct dialect of English. You can always tell a person from Opelousas because yeah. some of the guys kind of sound like Scooby-Doo. Not to diss anybody from Opelousas, but maybe you know what I'm saying if I say that. Um, good people are from Opelousas. So shout out my, you know, yeah. um, it's trying to send y'all some good energy. But the truth of the matter is, is that Louisiana is extremely racist. I wasn't shocked or surprised to hear that black churches were being burned. Um, it was like stepping into a time warp when I went to college out there. You have whole stores, um, like warehouse stores full of uh, Confederate flag yeah. gear. Yeah. Like there's commercials on TV of little babies in like Confederate flag bibs and like, mm. come on down and you know, get yeah. your... Yeah. Confederate flag. So the thing I'm picking <laughs> picking a bone with is one thing I'm I'm grateful for is that nobody was hurt or killed mm. in these fires, which I think is uh, there at least there's that. They did catch the person who is accused of it, and he is what, what do you think is racist? Just well, wild. Yeah. We all knew it is racist. Uh, exactly. I mean, exactly. We know what that is. Let's see. I pulled it up. He and then did you hear that he's like the son of a deputy? I did hear that. And what what I heard the thing that made me the most upset about it was that they are not calling it a hate crime. They're not calling it a hate crime. 
And as my lovely husband said, he's like, what is it, a love crime? Like, what the hell? Like, why? how are we going to have a, a white person? Crime. It's just a crime. It's an incident. They're not calling it that. And I just don't understand necessarily how we can even be entertaining this. Okay? And that was upsetting to me, just hearing that they hadn't decided. That. I don't know if the news Does has a hate crime this morning. hold heavier weight? Is it, is it, are they trying to be lenient? on the young man by not charging him with a hate crime because wow, hate Daddy crime holds a little sheriff. bit. Well, yeah, there's some, there's some conspiracy right there, right? You're mm -hmm. directly involved with the legal system in that area and they've given your son, they've chosen to give your son a lighter. And this is like small community too. This yeah. is literally the equivalent of somebody from Montbello burning three churches in Denver. It's not like some really big, well, maybe there's some large, larger picture to it for him, but this is, these are probably people that he sees it at his grocery store or at, you know, football yeah. games. Um, these are the types of people that he's attacking. These are people that he's been familiar with and or engaged with. It's not some, you know, this is, everybody in Opelousas knows who yeah. each other are. Yeah, yeah. So, that brings me to something that happened recently here in Denver, Colorado, where mm -hmm. one of our public schools um, had a swastika burned into the into the school. Right. And they're which, not calling that a hate crime either. Oh no, they're saying that they're it's, saying it's 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 anti-Semitic, which it is, and it. I found it disturbing though that that swastika was burned into a school that is predominantly black and brown. And when they mentioned it on CPR, on Colorado Public Radio, they called it also just like anti-Semitic. And to me, it felt like, it just felt like this kind of like erasure of black and brown people. And I saw our friend, uh, H. Soul, Hasir Ashamu, uh, the Our Voice Our Schools guy, you can Google that, put a link in there, I don't know. <laughs> but talked about that and it really, it really hit me because I did feel that. Like, no one is trying to say that people are not trying to oppress Jewish people. No one's trying to say that things are, are, are happening, and I felt like he was really clear about that, but it was just the idea that we have an administration in the public school system that didn't even take into consideration, like, that oh. that swastika, what it was used to being intimidated. And who, who it was intimidated. Who was it, right. it was intended to intimidate. Well, I'm sure that if somebody were to escalate a crime like burning a swastika into a school to the next, what would be the next ex escalation? Well, we can just look at the history of Denver. We know what the next es escalation move would be. It would be to bring a gun to that school, right? So then you've got to think in terms of, well, if he's only targeting Jewish people with his swastika, does that mean that he would come into a school and threaten and or hurt and abuse only Jewish children? at a school that's mostly children of color, black and brown children. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I think that the calling it anti-Semitic was a glazing over, it was, it was like a, a whitewashing mm -hmm. of a crime that was a, a direct threat to much more people than the Jewish yeah. community. Including them as well. Inclu right? I said, including uh, them. But a swastika on a school for black and brown children is not a direct threat to Jewish, the Jewish community. It's a, it's, a, it's a direct threat to all of those children in that school. Right, yeah. So it was just something that I wanted people to, to think about, and I know we're, we're pretty much like in agreement on that. I wasn't sure if anyone has comment. Are there any comments? Anybody checking that out? I'm a little okay, uncomfortable but, with the yeah. back and forth that I have seen between the anti, you know, the Jewish community and or communities of color and sort of what you said earlier, the hierarchy of pain or who's being targeted by what and in what ways. Um, and I've, I've felt very uncomfortable by those exchanges, and I don't really know what else to say about well, that. I, but I think I'm not in competition with Jewish people no, around my no. targets or my experiences. No, and but I think that's the thing. It's like oppression anywhere is wrong, okay? And that's it. Like, that's the end of it, right? Mm -hmm. Is that it's wrong anywhere, it's but we wrong. just want people to kind of think about that just a little bit. Like, right. who's teaching your children, and what are they thinking about, okay? All right, so... So, next up, okay, conspiracy theory. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Okay, so I wanted to talk about this because this, the reason I wanted to get into this topic is one, because of a couple of conversations that we've had together when we were not on mic or, or doing anything. Right, we were right? getting to know each other. Yeah, yeah like as our, our friendship is progressing, right? And, and that's fine. But we had a conversation that I felt like was a little bit, like I just didn't expect it from you. 
um, when we started talking about vaccinations. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay. So I had said, I'm, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'm like pro-vaccination. I just like take my kid to the doctor and get him vaccinated. And I go by the American Medical Society standards, mm -hmm. right? And so I don't want to spend too much time on this because I know it will get like really hot. But <laughs> I do feel like I want to talk about why you are suspect of vaccinations. And can you just say like, cause you, how many children do you have today? I have two children. And are they vaccinated against, for example, the measles? Yes, they are vaccinated against uh, the things they must get vaccinated for to enroll in a public school in Colorado or to play a sport, a contact sport. Right. So things like staph and hepatitis, yeah. They are absolutely okay. vaccinated yeah. against. Yeah. So you believe in vaccinations that they, the science behind them is mm. real or... Yes. Yes. Sure. Okay. However, you told me when we had this conversation, you were like, oh, I didn't vaccinate my kids. You said that to me. And remember me and my husband were like, <gasps> right? We kind of had a freak out. And then what did you... Tell me the rest of that story. I want, so, I want people to hear the rest of that. <laughs> I got my kids all the basic stuff. Um, when, I think when we were talking about that, I think it was like in a response to like a whooping cough commercial or something. But I just, I do see a lot more commercials for medications and vaccinations and shots than I used to see. Um, and my experience uh, with making me a little bit leery about all of the new vaccinations coming up, obviously, I was vaccinated for, or my children have been vaccinated for chicken pox. We talked about, you know, basic things. But yeah. the newer ones, um, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say which ones I'm talking about. Or, Go no. ahead. Why I mean, not? like, you know, like... Face the lawsuit like a later. Like a whooping cough or Call like a HPV or, you know, like everybody's rushing, rushing, rushing to get the new flu shot yeah, or, yeah. you know, things like that. I, I do do a little bit of research before I get in line. Yeah. Um, I do do things like not go to the clinic in my poor neighborhood to get such things. I'll drive all the way south. I do have some concerns about the access that I, as a black woman with black children, have to adequate health care, to decent health care, to quality health care in my own communities. And I have some um, reservations about just signing up for whatever anybody tells me to sign up for without doing my own research. Now, the problem that I run into is that when I've done some research, it's sort of discredited by everybody in the medical system or like the healthcare system, like, oh, no, you don't know what you're talking about. And, you know, that's just ignorant. And I would, I, I, I just feel like I'm supposed to be responsible for this person. This is my responsibility. And I take offense to you not understanding that I want to make sure that all things put into this person's body have been checked, questioned, and approved by me. I'm not just going to take somebody's word for it, and I'm certainly not going to do it at a poor clinic that mostly people of color attend. Mm -hmm. Just just take anybody's word for it. And so that's interesting. That, not interesting. I don't want to say it like that. I just want to say that I understand the reason why you are skeptical. I understand that. And because I feel like if you, especially for like black people in the United States of America, like when was the last time you felt like the government like had your back? We could sit here all night looking for an answer for that, right? I mean, let's just be real, okay? Like when there is more than one black person in this room, when did you feel like the government had your back? Like, oh, the government would never, ever, ever put or jeopardize, put in danger or jeopardize my children or my health or my livelihood or where I live or my water or my food. The government would never do that. I wish I could wake up and feel that way as a black I person. Know. And so, I really do wish I could. But I want people who are maybe not familiar with, for example, the Tuskegee experiment. Right. And I am just, know you are familiar with it, but basically it was a study done on black men where they gave half of them like the cure and they didn't give the rest of them and they just let them die. They let them go blind and insane. It was like, it was born from a, like a Nazi, I think. Fact check me. Um, but it was a study they were doing in, in Guatemala. And then the lead on that study came to the United States and worked on the Tuskegee experiment, okay? And so Tuskegee, they just 
they did that. Like, I feel like if you heard the details of well, that. Well, I believe they, yeah, some of the details are they injected the, the men who were not actually infected with syphilis. They injected them with syphilis, telling them that it was something else that would help cure them or that they were giving them yeah. medicine. And yeah. they were just making them sick. Right. So to me, in my mind, when I think of all the things that happen to people of color in the United States and the historical piece, like, I also would not necessarily... I, I just, I guess I just want to say that I understand why you feel the way that you feel. Yeah. Because there, historically, it's, it has a been... a historical reason. I mean, a lot of the breakthroughs that we made through medically have to do with um, experiments done on slaves. Yeah, like on black um, people. Jay, Mary, and Sam. On groups of immigrants yes. who don't have a lot of pull in the legal system to advocate for themselves. And it's unfortunate. Yeah, but even, even the Nazis, a lot of our medicine, Western medicine, is, has... Has, was born of, of Nazi medicine. Isn't that crazy? We've got leaps and bounds on hypothermia because of not, we have the Nazis to thank for the information we have on hypothermia. I'm not thanking a Nazi for shit, okay? <gasps> Beep! Okay, all right, all right, all right, and all right. And so conspiracy. I actually wanted to read the definition of conspiracy. <laughs> okay, lay it on me. Conspiracy, a secret plan by a group to do something unlawful or harmful. A conspiracy to destroy, plot scheme, the action of plotting or conspiring. So it's like a lot of things could be a conspiracy, quite frankly. A secret plan. All right. We could make a secret. We about to make a secret plan right now. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> so seriously, though, we have to talk about it. Did you have a question for us, Leah? All right. So it's got a comment by L.A. Okay. Experiments are daily. <gasps> oh, thank you for saying, saying that, that. Elle. Yeah. Elliot. Yeah. Thank you. That's true. And that's what I'm saying. These marginalized groups are the ones getting the brunt. You, you, you know, you can't shame a group of people and say, look at this amazing vaccine. You should sign up and get it because it works. It's like, well, how do we know it works? Did you experiment on a whole bunch of immigrants? Did you experiment on a whole bunch of prisoners first without their consent, without anesthesia? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. how did we get to this place? <sighs> Thank you for saying the prisoners. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's the question. So now we're going to talk about something that's in the news right now. Mm -hmm. Nipsey. Oh. R.I.P. Nipsey Hustle. Okay. So a lot of talk going on about him mm -hmm. um, and who actually killed him. When I first saw the news about it, people were saying that it was like, he was assassinated because he was doing a documentary about Dr. Sebi. Sebi right. I don't believe that, but. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, but like that, that's the reason. But I, I also don't believe that. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things going into that. But so do you, who do you think killed Nipsey Hussle? I think the man, I think the man, it's really bizarre how they won't, like, won't show his face or something, but it might have to do with the fact that I think a lot of his family's been, um, now put in danger, like direct threats or and or have already mm. been murdered. There have been maybe three or four murders since Nipsey was murdered. Um, so it's just getting really ugly and really bloody. But there's some really amazing people in that community who are like declaring that it is peace and that you have no choice. We are claiming this as a peaceful, like we can't keep doing this to each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's this guy, Riza Islam, that I follow sometimes. And they, I mean, they are just in the streets and they are reclaiming that space. But I just think that it was a case of envy, uh, mental health. Mm -hmm. Um, however, the conspiracy theorist in me who's seen The Manchurian Car Candidate, that mm -hmm. movie with Denzel, remember that? <laughs> yeah. We had the chip. <laughs> okay. A psychologist, a black psychologist, one psychiatrist, yeah. once told me that they keep a list. The government wants you to report to them any of your patients who are yeah. like crazy. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna, you know, yeah. bleep the president. I'm gonna yeah. something the, you know, Mother Teresa, whatever. But. They want a list of all those names, numbers, address. They want all those people who are on the brink like that. Now, if the government has access to stuff like that, yeah, you can start going down the rabbit hole of the conspiracy. But I don't think it would be too difficult to manipulate a person with mental health into doing something that mm. you wanted them to do if you wanted to get rid of somebody or wanted somebody's legacy to die. I just, I don't. You know, for all we know, they could have called him with the trigger word like on Manchurian Candidate. They Lord. just call her and said, Apple, and he just... <laughs> 
got no. his gun and went down there to Nipsey's no. shop? No. You, you don't know. You know I what mean, I mean? We, okay, so Look we how, don't know. Look how impactful he was in that community. I mean, they shut the streets yeah, down. I know, I know. But something I, I heard um, on This American Life NPR show, and it was an interview with all of these activists from Ferguson, because I know you've heard several of the activists from Ferguson. Are missing. Are mm -hmm. missing dead. or dead. And the, my mind, when I saw that, I was like, they were killed, right? Intentionally. I think that the government did it, whatever, right, right? right? So that's what I'm thinking. However, when I was listening to this piece, they interviewed one of the activists, and he said, yeah, if I walked out of here today and I got shot, everyone would be like, oh my gosh, another Ferguson activist, mm -hmm. right? But, but he's like, but they're not taking into account that this is what my family history is. This is who I've rolled with. He's like, and then people want to like conflate the two and it's not always true. But I do think there is something to, to being not necessarily open, but maybe, I don't know if that's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say like empathy. Like I want people to just try to understand where like the other person is coming from. And we're like in our little bubble, right? Like in general, right? Because you and I are <sighs> Try to keep it people, positive, right? You know, like- Like-minded people. Right. Mm -hmm. However, when we disagree on something or when we have a conversation about it, I want people to feel empowered to have a conversation and know that you're, maybe you're not gonna like agree but to understand like where people are, are coming from. So like I really appreciate you like being ready to like talk about that. Um, then I really did have uh, some questions for you. Here we go, are you ready? This is lightning. Yes. Lightning round, CO conspiracies with Danette. Here we go. Danette, moon landing. Do you think we went to the moon? 50-50. Shut up, you didn't Maybe we think that. <laughs> Maybe we shot something up there and I, what, the, the moon landing video? I don't know. I'm on the fence. I'm not saying it ain't true. What I'm saying is that um, maybe. Great. <laughs> But you know what? Actually, what kind of solidified it for me? What's his name? Neil Armstrong? Was it? Neil Armstrong's birthday was on a blue double moon or something like that one time. And I was like, maybe that is some sort you of You are like, a woo-woo. <laughs> it was. His birthday landed on like the only double blue moon we'll ever see in All this right. lifetime. Okay, next. Is the earth flat or round? Uh, don't know. Shut up, Danette. You know the Earth is round. Stop the playing. pictures that I have been privy to show a round Earth. The history, the gatekeepers who I've been privy to keep black and brown people locked away from the knowledge at all times. And they lie. I know, but do you really think the Earth is flat? Come do on, I really? Come, come, do come, I come really? Real, come for no, real what me. I really think is that the gatekeepers have made sure to keep the masses, the poor, the people of color, completely out of touch with reality. And so anything is possible. But the pictures I've seen depict a round earth, and that is what I've been raised to believe. I have no access to any sort of science information, uh, microscopes to give me the ability or empower myself to see for myself. I gotta mm -hmm. ask somebody. Mm -hmm. I gotta mm -hmm. just believe what they tell me. Hmm. 9-11. 9-11. That was, that was a mess. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, but do you think, okay, so do you think, do you think 9-11 happened? What do you mean, like? Like, there are people, there are people that who don't believe that, that it's, like, fake. Oh, so that no, it, didn't that, happen. it happened. It happened. All right. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. The buildings were there, now they're not. All right, all right, I'll take that one. <laughs> do you think that Jay-Z and Beyonce are the head of the Illuminati? No. I think they are! <laughs> I feel like if they were, like, we wouldn't know about it or something, right? Like, if it's the secret society, why can't I look it up on YouTube? I think I, I, think I started that rumor myself right now. But I think that power does corrupt and that, you know, um, I hope that they're using it. It seems like they're using it for the good, but I think that there's plenty of people who probably are not using their power for, for the betterment of okay. people. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. No Illuminati. Ready? Okay. Obama. <laughs> Secret Muslim? I don't think so. <laughs> you didn't and say that with any confidence. Do I you mean, think Obama was not born in the United States of America? Even though they so here's where it's coming from. Oh, My father was a chaplain in the military. Okay. So I grew up going to different countries, different cities, practicing um, faiths and spending time with people in many different faiths. So I don't want to say, oh, I know for a fact Obama's not 
um, a Muslim, maybe Obama has spent time with Islamic people, which it sounds like he may have. He has some ancestors who may be Muslim, yes, his family. Um, and maybe some of that Islamic tradition resonated with him. Maybe he chose to pray with them at some point, and the minute you say Obama's not a Muslim, then the picture shows up of him, you know, having an, an Islamic, you know, at an Islamic event. That doesn't necessarily make him a Muslim. I don't know who Obama prays to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't, Do you think Obama was know, born in the United States? Um, in, in Hawaii. That's in Hawaii? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Sorry. Yeah. That was going to be like a the, the Yeah, I believe he was born right in there. Hawaii. Yeah. All right, next. Lizard people are running the world. That's a very common thing. And I, before I sound crazy, sometimes I do wonder <laughs> if lizard people are in fact running the world. Do you think lizard people are controlling? Well, we'd have to start, like, I believe that, like, I kind of believe in aliens, so maybe. <laughs> I think that it's a really big, bad world. That's why I say it's a big, bad world out there. I, I just can't put my finger on how much is possible or capable. What is it, darling? White Jeanette believes in aliens, too. White Jeanette! White Jeanette believes in aliens! Boo! Hey, boo, I see you, Jeanette. Hey. It's true. I mean, I believe in aliens, so I think that there could be another sort of... I, mean, I do, too. I think Mars is full of vampires, and I think if we go to Mars, we're going to come back, and everyone's going to turn into a vampire. That's just a theory I'm working with. I know it sounds crazy. I, and there's so many different animals and creatures that we're just barely like figuring out. Yeah. We're pulling them out yeah. of the ocean. There's so many possibilities of combinations. All right. So we're 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 like both kind of there on the lizard. People I don't know if they're running the world, lizards, okay. but I know that there's some. <laughs> okay. Last one. This one's a hard one. Is Tupac alive? I'm starting to feel a little discouraged after Nipsey. I've I've been actually pretty much a believer that maybe Tupac might not like he's maybe not, he's like he's hiding gone. out in Cuba he's with a, 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 okay. You think he's with the Sada Shakur? Maybe. Let's all just hold on to that dream. You know I'm a Cali kid at heart, you know, so, so when he died we were be. like crying. It could be. It could be. We love Pac. Okay. Well, I, I wanna wrap it up with this this idea of conspiracy theories, okay? okay. And just to kind of let people know who, who may be watching, um, that I want you to think about fear and how that impacts our thought processes and the things that we're, we're kind of thinking about, you know? Um, so that, that's like important to me, that people just, just thought I just wanna leave people with something like to think about. The other thing, before we wrap it up, producer, <laughs> because I'm a producer now, it's really funny. And she's like, wrap it up. And I'm like, no. Um, I just want, I'm wrapping it up, I promise. I want to, I do want to, well, first, I just want to check in about a couple of local things. Because okay. some people know, as you know, I am making a documentary about women of color who are running for local office. Oh, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. It's, it's, called, good. it's called Running With My Girls. It is, it's fascinating. I'm following Lisa Calderon. I'm following Candy C. DeBaca. Candy C. DeBaca is running what? for City Council District 9. Candy is like our little Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Our own little one. Yes, I know. She's like so cute. So, but it, maybe it's not that cute because um, they grabbed a, a soundbite of her at one of her debates, a libertarian site, and it has gone crazy like viral <laughs> like a billion like a million views. yeah people are like watching it but it's also really scary because like a lot of the responses are like well this is why we have the second amendment and they're calling her they're like doing like there's all kinds of stuff happening around this and so just the power though of our of our words you know what i mean like so Amen. i just i guess i also just want people to to think about that too i'm like all bossy auntie rebecca and the reason i wanted to mention that um is because our next show on april 25th april 25th here on versa colorado we will actually be having uh poet carrie joy Carrie's real cool. Yeah, and who, she is she is Candy C. DeBaca's partner, so yeah. I think it's going to be kind of interesting to find out what happens once you go viral, like in a Cassio I know, Cortez, you know? Because right. Like, we don't know. Oh, Girl, we didn't go viral. Although Santa Baby, Santa Baby could go viral at it's any time. True. Leah, put it in the comments. All right. Santa <laughs> so Baby Santa could go baby. viral anytime. <laughs>
You can catch me if anybody would like to see me sing. We would, of course. I would hope so. Five Points Jazz Fest this May the 18th. I'll be live at the Rossonian. Yes. Denver, which Colorado. Which is like historic place. Billy mm -hmm. was there. Louie was there. It's mm -hmm. right on 27th and Welton, right in the center of Five Points. Um, we're going to make some history. And it's so I would love to see y'all there. 11.30 a.m. I'll be singing jazz. I got some like an amazing lineup. You like, left the best part out, though. It's free and oh, open yeah. to the public. Free. <laughs> free Jazz Festival, May 18th. Oh, I love that. Free. 11.30 a.m. Right. I'll see right. you there. And the last thing I like to do, and I want to, we're going to work on a jingle, girl, but it's positive news for, for people, people of color. color. All right. So I just wanted to shout out. I want to shout out something. Um, there is a woman. She is Colorado-based, and her name is... <laughs> Danielle Ambrosine and she has a company it's called cultures and they have this publication that they put out and it's pretty amazing it's really beautiful and it's sort of to celebrate like um, people who grew up in more than one culture people mm -hmm. who are mixed race Ew. Um, and just kind of kind of checking in with that they are in thousands of bookstores across North America and it, it, they ain't cheap, girl. It's not cheap. But I would like to, <clears throat> I'd like to present you with a beautiful copy of Cultures. There's no E because it's about hidden diversity. Because I know your grandmama white. Okay, now. <laughs> but it's a really good, it's a really beautiful magazine. And the reason I got you this is because this is the military brat issue okay okay and it's available at Thanks. various stores and here in denver it's at in um where is it it's at tea leaves uh tea oh leaves. i love tea leaves yeah. so that's what's going on so she's she's a black woman she has this amazing company she's doing great so i just want to shout you out donnie thank oh, you for look, making it's like, this like love in there it's like really beautiful uh, it's a really beautiful publication yeah so this I'm is really good excited. stuff guys and she's been called so that's great. Support right. local stuff. Support. Sure. Support local stuff all day, every day. Support Versa Colorado. Versa Colorado. <laughs> I'm like messing it up, you guys. I this is so know what I'm doing. Thank you right. so much. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you May 18th at 11.30 a.m. at the Rossonian here in Denver at the Five Points Jazz Festival. We'll see the rest of you April 25th at 8 p.m. And you can, if you missed it, just you know, just watch it again. I'll put it on YouTube or something. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Who am I, who am I, who am I?